Hey, I know. When, I think I think I saw a comment of yours. I don't know if it was in Time or Newsweek. Somebody had asked you about uh, the pictures that are out now. There's Star Wars, Close Encounters, and so forth. And they ask you what you thought. And you thought that they should be, not that you didn't say they were entertaining, but you thought maybe they should deal a little closer with scientific facts. Yeah, my, my sense of them <coughs> is that sort of the 11-year-old in me loved them, but uh, they, uh, they could have made uh, a better effort to, to do things right. Uh, a, lot of, a lot of different aspects of things. There's a, Star Wars starts out saying it's on some other galaxy. Right. And then you see there's people. And uh, scene, starting in scene one, there's a, there's a problem because human beings are the result of a unique evolutionary sequence based upon right. so many individually unlikely random events on the Earth. In fact, I think most evolutionary biologists would agree that if you started the Earth out again and just let those random factors operate, you might wind up with beings that are as uh, smart as us and as ethical and artistic and all the rest, but they would not be human beings. That's for the Earth. So in another planet, different environment, yeah. very likely to have a human being. Are you saying on another galaxy, uh, it's not possible that there could be... It's extremely unlikely that uh, there would be creatures as similar to us as, uh, as the dominant ones in Star Wars, and there's a whole bunch of other things. They're all white. The skin of uh, all the humans in, uh, in Star Wars, oddly enough, is sort of like, like this. Right. And uh, not even the uh, other colors represented on the Earth are present, much less uh, greens and blues and purples and oranges. They did have a scene in Star Wars with a lot of strange characters. Yeah, but none of them seem to be in charge of the galaxy. Everybody in charge of the galaxy seemed to look like us. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I thought there was a large amount of human chauvinism. And also, I felt very bad that at the end, the Wookiee didn't get a medal also. You know, all, all the people got medals, and the Wookiee who had been in there fighting all the time, he didn't get any medal. And I thought that was an example of anti-Wookiee discrimination. <laughs> You're, you're dissecting this scientifically, Carl, <laughs> taking all the fun out of it for me. Well, that's it. I mean, you can you can view these pictures entirely uncritically. Well, that's really what it was. It was a it was a shootout, wasn't it? A western sure. in outer space. Sure. The good guys versus the bad guys. But my sense is that every picture which touches on science could do that, and at the same time, just a little more effort to get the science right. I remember one comment you made. It was about uh, um, allusion to. Uh, speed when it really had to do with distance. Yeah, the, that's the, right. The uh, parsec or Solo, like. that's right. Talked about uh, getting to a certain place in uh, only so many parsecs of time. Yeah. Uh, or speed. Which when, it's a unit, when it's a unit of distance, it's like uh, saying uh, that uh, from here to uh, San Diego is 30 miles an hour. It just doesn't mean anything. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But how many people were sitting there that figured that out during well, the picture? That all you got to do is hire one impoverished graduate student and uh, <laughs> get all the facts right. I, I mean, can tell you easy. that. Uh, I was, when Ray Bradbury was on here last night, and I, I think I've asked you this question before, because if I remember in Star Wars, they got up and they got in the spaceship and they were beyond the speed of light, right? Yep. Now, as far as, I guess, science knows, that is supposed to be the finite limit of velocity is the speed of light and nothing can go faster than that and yet in this picture they were going faster than that and i asked ray i said what would happen i think i asked you the same question if they found something that was beyond the speed of light how wouldn't that change all of the whole yeah, physical conception of what's going on a lot of people are sort of annoyed that uh, physicists should uh, lay any constraints on what we yeah. can do in the future but uh, I think uh, the way to look at it is uh, something like this. This is all due to Einstein. I mean, that's right. to be laid in his lap, all the people who are annoyed at not being able to travel fast in the speed of light. Um, it's simply this. If no material object can travel at or beyond the speed of light, then there's a great deal of things in the world that are understandable quantitatively in detail. The universe makes sense. If it were possible to travel faster than the speed of light, then all of that that comprehensibility breaks down, and there are a lot of awkward things that can happen, such as uh, effects preceding causes, uh, if you see what I mean. The light goes on, and then you walk to the switch to turn it, and uh, things Actually, there like was, that. Wasn't there a famous poem about that after Einstein's? There was a young lady, lady named, from Bright. Named Bright, who could who travel, travel much faster, faster than, than light. light. She left. set out one way, one day in a relative way and returned the preceding night. Right. That's the one. <laughs> that was little Carl Sagan reciting. And now let's hear our next student. Very good, Carl. You may take your seat. We'll